Hi there, I thought I would do a little video while I'm waiting for my wife to conduct a piece of business. So, yeah, about the thumbnail today, I'm gonna address that a little bit later. So welcome back to the channel. For you guys who are new, I'm Bill and I taught languages for more than 10 years and now I'm doing a YouTube channel with my daughter for you so I guess you could say that I'm working for you right now uh, today we're gonna talk about 10 reasons that you should read for your child I'm going to talk about the reasons that are kind of relevant to language learning otherwise the list would be very long so for example it could be argued that reading for your child may uh, strengthen the, you know, father-daughter bond in my case, but we're going to stick to the reasons that has to do with language learning. So the first one on the list is expanding the child's vocabulary, which is quite obvious. When you read, we usually see more of the words that are not used in day-to-day -day language. So for example, my daughter is trilingual and for Norwegian, for example, there's not that much time for her to learn. So every day I talk to her maybe 10 minutes in Norwegian, but I read for her about 20 minutes every day. So this reading kind of enables her to keep up with the Norwegian language. Next on the list is improving concentration and attention span. This is really important now that children use mobiles and iPads and stuff like that so much. So when you read for them, they will only have the audio and they have to kind of focus on that. and even make pictures from that, images, visuals, right? Number four is actually a little bit surprising, maybe, but develops critical thinking. Okay, so how could that actually be? That sounds a little strange. Actually, it's because um, when you read for the child, they start thinking about the situations, the characters, so they kind of start thinking about how things could have been different, what could have happened, and what should that character have done in that particular situation. How could it be different than, or how could the choice have been different than what it is, what it was? Let's talk a little bit about that thumbnail today. If you have a pediatrician for your child, that person may not know all the reasons that we are going to talk about today. Even though children development is their speciality. Next on the list is enhancing auditory memory, which is a little bit different, but kind of related to what we already talked about. Uh, so when the child has to listen and remember everything from the audio, then the child will start using the auditory memory more. And uh, so, for example, if that child wanted to later in life, um, you know, memorize and sing songs or something at a professional level, that would be easier because they already practiced their auditory memory, if that makes sense. Okay, number six improving visual and auditory processing. So it all has to do with, a little bit back to what we talked about earlier, that they don't have, they're not watching a movie, so they don't get like spoon-fed image. It could be argued that watching movies for children, especially if you are trying to learn or be better at the native language, that's not really good. Then it's much better to read for the child. 
the reason for this is that the child is probably exposed to that language so much already. So uh, watching a movie is kind of like a brain dead activity in many ways compared to being read for because when you're being read for you have to process the audio and then you have to produce the visuals for that audio. Next one is a little bit more obvious, improving language skills and grammar, which goes without saying, uh, when the child hears more sentences that probably will be uh, grammatically correct, then the grammar will be better and it will kind of like passively just seep into the child's language. Uh, next one on the list is fostering a lifelong love of reading because if you can capture the interest for the child uh, reading books then in the future they're going to be so much better suited to read more and thus learn more okay so before we do the few last ones i just want to kind of ask you if you like this kind of video where there's not that much editing. Actually, I'm planning to do this video without any editing today, so let's see if that's possible. But could you just write in the comment if you could appreciate this kind of video without much editing compared to other videos that we have done on the channel? Uh, okay, so let's get into the last ones. Establishing a bedtime routine. Yeah, I, I wanted to bring that to the list basically because it's it's really good for children to have a routine and it's easier to for them to accept that you're going to read for them every day if you have a bedtime routine uh, because it's just you know once the routine is established then it's so much easier to have them do it so the last one today number 10 i think if i didn't count wrong is enhancing cultural awareness and this one is especially important for trilingual, bilingual children because they might not be living in the culture in which they're trying to learn the language of. So for example, like I said, my daughter is trilingual and she's, you know, she has kind of like English, Norwegian and Thai as a native language, but it's a bit harder to keep up when you have three languages she can learn a lot of Norwegian culture, uh, which is connected to the language, obviously. Uh, when you read Norwegian, for example, then, yeah, the culture is coming out from those books and what you read for her. So even though she has been to Norway only one time and she's seven years old, she really has a good understanding of Norwegian culture. And that is a little bit strange, right? She's only been to Norway for like four weeks or something like that. Those are the 10 points that I wanted to talk about. What do you think?